what's going on guys and welcome back to a brand new video i wanted to start off by actually saying that have you ever wondered uh how people say different sayings or how people how different countries say their sayings like in the u.s we had we have to live a life of luxury or something like that you know what i'm talking about well i actually uh talked to i have a friend that's he's german and he i told him hey what's a weird saying that you say over there or what's a saying that you say over there, but it translates over here. And he said over there in Germany, we say to live like a maggot in bacon, <laughs> which transfers to over here in America to live life, uh, to live a life of luxury. <laughs> so I was like, holy hell to live like a maggot in bacon. Well, he does have a luxury life doing that, but that's, I was just wondering now, now that I got my uh, curiosity peaking, like what are other countries? How do you say that in other countries or what's that saying? Anyways, scratch it. I thought that was pretty interesting how different countries have like weird ways of saying or maybe ours is weird. I'm pretty sure ours is straightforward. I'm, yeah, I'm like, yeah, straightforward. It's a straight, right? Okay. Anyways. Today we're going to be talking about configuring Webpack. Yes, you're probably wondering. We already did that, but have we done production? And their answer is no, obviously we've always been doing dev. So today we're going to be focusing on production, production, production. Okay. And the first thing I'm going to do is actually install a module that we're going to need because we're going to be splitting this web pack into three different files and you'll see why in a bit, but first let's actually install this. So yarn add, and we're going to add, uh, we're going to do dash dash def because we don't need it in, in our actual, when we actually run it or when people actually, uh, you already know what I'm talking about. We're going to uh, add web pack dash merge. Now remember the three files I was talking about? Well, the web pack, you could go to the configurations, by the way, if you do not know what I'm talking about and let's actually do that right now. So that way, you know what the hell we're doing. So if you go to web pack and then this one, you go to documentation, the guides, and you go all the way down here to production here, it runs you down, runs down, gives you a rundown on what to do in production. Okay. So that's where I'm, I'm just going to be following this. That's it. So why we need this merge is because we're going to have three different files. So the first file is going to be a common file and then the next file is going to be a dev and then the next one is going to be production. So the common file is going to have everything that the dev and production actually need. The dev file is only going to have all those um, properties for just development, just like this, like the dev tool, dev server, this will live inside the dev uh, configuration file. And for the prod, only things that you would need for production, that's where you're going to have it. So the first thing I actually want to do was actually run the build. So we have a build in package.json build. And I just want to see how much, how much megabytes, uh, it actually takes up. So we're going to do, um, yarn run, or I don't think we need to run. It is a build. No. Yeah. We should need to do yarn build and let's see how long it actually takes. Plus obviously when you're doing a build, it's going to take a while because it's for production, correct? I just want to see, let me see what I'm getting errors. Oh, here, we actually built it. So our size right now is 3.87 megabytes. Sorry, not megabyte, mebibyte or mebibyte. So uh, I don't know how you want like to pronounce it. I, I like to pronounce it mebibyte or mebibyte. I don't know. I don't know, but it's not megabytes, it's mebibyte. Yeah, it's kind of weird. Uh, so it's actually, it's actually, it, it really is. It tells you right here, it's a big file. So we're going to see how much we could actually reduce this. So it's just giving us warnings about the mode and I'll, don't worry about this. We're not going to see this, uh, once we configure it. So let's actually create those three files. So the first file, I'm actually going to rename this. It's not going to be uh config It's actually going to be webpack common common.js and then we're going to have another one uh new file is going to be web pack dot dev dot js and let's take it out 
outside yes move it all right and then the other file is going to be webpack dot prod dot js and then I right here dot and there it is and like I said guys common is going to have all of our common alt so all the things that dev and prod actually need so let's actually start stripping things out from here so I'm actually I'm going to copy all this and just pasting it in prod as well so that way we have it we'll get to package.json in a bit so both files are going to use the entry output output uh, output they're also going to use the modules inside of this but the only difference is that we're not going to need the dev server or the dev tool and dev server inside of common in common right here so let me actually get rid of this stuff this stuff and that is it I control save this is our common this is the stuff that both of these files the dev and prod are going to be using now let's actually go inside of a uh, dev and actually configure this so for dev like we we just installed a module or a library the merge webpack merge and we're actually going to be using it here so I could I could actually get rid of this because we don't need it but I'm going to use it I'm gonna call it merge and we're gonna get that um, webpack pack merge file that we just got also we need to grab the file that we need to merge so we want to merge common with the dev server because common has like I I've been saying it has everything that we need so we need to add that stuff so const common I'm gonna call mine common common is going to equal require re require it's in the same directory and it's called webpack common.js awesome now down here we're going to be doing module exports yes and we want to let me actually get let me redo it again module oops module dot exports we're gonna set that equal and then we're gonna use the merge which is our webpack merge because we want to merge and it's going to be we want to merge common with everything that everything everything else that we need so what do we need well we need uh, we need to tell it the mode this is where we're gonna actually tell it if it's the for development or if it's for production so mode we're gonna set that equal to production and look at that it already does that for, uh, not, not production develop development there we go what we also need is this right here the dev tool and dev server copy this now I actually could get rid of all of this and paste that right here and we are done this is all we need to do to actually make the dev server work so we have our dev tool which we still use and our dev server awesome now let, let me actually copy this copy this and add it to webpack JS now we're not gonna need a dev server and we're not going to be grab yeah we need common so right here instead of development is going to be production and then dev tool instead of cheap module uh, eval source map we're going to do just source map so the difference between both of them between the uh, the the cheap module and just source map is that source map actually grabs every single little detail about our JavaScript and puts it in the browser once production is ran right this this is by the way this is a a, a a breakdown like it's not it's not actual the definition I'm just telling you like the little difference between these two now cheap module email it does almost the exact same thing it just does a cheaper version a dirtier version of that so that's the only reason and plus this is faster and this is extremely slower than than the cheap one so I'm just letting you, you know we've already talked about dev tools when we did the webpack and you could add as many dev tools as you want it actually tells you what which ones are meant for production and which ones aren't so you could just keep on adding if you want to but we're going to just use source map for this control save this now we do need to run we're done we're actually done we're done with all the webpacks okay this is 
it's pretty it's pretty amazing don't worry about it now if you're doing webpack if you have webpack uh i think lower than three version lower than three then there's a there's a different way you have to do this i i have a uh, webpack like four point something i actually let me see web pack i don't even think i did it uh globally but yeah i don't have webpack globally but i think i have like version four or something like that so that's why I'm doing it this way. If you have a uh, version three and lower, I think there's another way you actually have to do it. So you might have to look that up. Just just go to their files or docs and it'll tell you exactly what to do. So anyways, now that we're done with these three and merging them and all that stuff, we do need to configure our package.json. For the build, it is going to be still webpack, but we need to tell it which configura configuration file to actually use. Okay, so we're gonna do dash dash config and we're going to tell it to do the web pack dot prod dot js for our server we're still going to be using web pack dev server but we need to say we want to open we want to open it plus we need to do the config so config and do the web pack dot uh dev dot js that is it that's it we're just telling them which one to use and which one not to use but if you do remember uh every time you use dev server it actually opens up a new browser for us but if we actually just run a run run the application without doing the dev server we do need to put in that live server once again we had it in the beginning and then we erased it so i'm just going to re-add that i'm gonna call it serve and we're going to do live server remember this is a uh, a module that we we uh or a library that we installed and we want to just uh host the public folder that's it public and why am i getting an okay i'm not getting error all right awesome now let's actually build this sucker let's see what we've done so yarn build and let's see how far we've gotten so I think the other one was what three point something, maybe bytes. Let's see how much it is now. Oh, actually, I want to see what we've. I actually want to see now our real webpack merge. Right, right, right. Yarn bill. We got three point eight seven, maybe bytes. And what do we have now? Oh, we actually it reduced. You can see it, 705 Kiwi byte. Um, man, these terminologies are getting out of hand. <laughs> it's not really getting out of hand. It's just like I'm just used to uh, kilobyte or megabytes. I'm not used to Mibi bytes or Kiwi bytes yet. I haven't I haven't said those in a good while. Anyways. So yeah, it actually did reduce. Awesome. Let's see what warnings we're actually getting now. So warning and that's the size of the following. Can you write this is performance assets bundle to JS? Right, right, right. It's just giving us an, okay, performance web performance. It's giving us a, uh, our recommended size limit is 244 and we have a 705 uh, file. And over here is saying that, yeah, it's saying the same thing and yep. All right, but as you can see, it actually did reduce quite a bit. All right, we went to from three point something uh, maybe bytes to 705 kibi bytes, which is an enormous drawback, which is awesome, or an enormous enormous save. So, anyways, guys, that was it for this video. I just wanted it to, I just wanted to configure a webpack for actually production and also for dev. And to show you a new way to actually do this uh, merging files together. So that way we get three of them, the common, the dev, and the prod uh, configuration files. So thank you guys for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. And I will see you in the next video. And we, we up oh, sorry, in the next video, we do need to configure our CSS. So that's what we're going to be doing in our next video. Configuring our CSS for production as well, minif minifying that as well. So thanks guys. I'll see you in the next video. Bye.